All right, just going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic twisting of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. This is a verse I've seen Calvinists try to use in their very, very heretical doctrine, uh, actually borderline blasphemous, that God is basically the one who ordains and authors sin. Now, you may have Calvinists that deny this, but I have clips of multiple Calvinist preachers such as James White, John Piper, and even a, clip, a quote from John Calvin himself saying essentially that God is the author of sin. Which means, yes, every horrible thing and every sinful thing is ultimately governed by God. And that's a problem, but the center of the solution to the problem is a choice you have to make about the cross. And that God ordains sinful actions. And by the way, I have a quote from James White, literally saying that God ordains child rape. When a child is raped, is God responsible and did he decree that rape? If he didn't, then that rape is, a, is an element of meaningless evil that has no purpose. What I'm trying to point out by going to Scripture... So what is your scripture, answer there? Because I, I want to understand the answer I'm to that question. I'm trying to go to Scripture to answer the, Yes, but the reason, what is the answer to the question that the, he just asked so easy, that we can understand what the answer is? I, I, I mentioned to him, yes, because if not, then it's meaningless and purposeless. And though God knew it was going to happen, he created without a purpose. I'm not joking. Uh, I'll probably, I might bring it out in a future video, but uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 45 or 7 because this is the one they like, one of them they like to use. I mean, they, they have others also, but let's read the text and just see what it says and show that they're twisting the passage. Okay, God is not the author of sin. I mean, that is just wicked to, to claim that, but of course, Calvinism is obviously of the devil. But Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7 I form the light and create darkness, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, they home in on a statement, oh, I create evil, you know, but what's going on? Okay, first of all, in context, God is simply explaining that he created everything, and God is explaining his supremacy. You can see Isaiah 45, verse 5 to 6, Isaiah 45, verse 8 to 9, and Isaiah chapter 45, verse 12, all in the same context there. It should also be pointed out, too, that evil and sin are not always synonymous in Scripture, and there are examples of God repenting of doing evil. Okay, God is sinless. That's simple. Revelation chapter 15 verse 4 talks about that. God, God is the only one that is holy. So how can God repent of doing evil? If we're going to conflate the two together, that would mean that when God's repenting of doing evil, God's repenting of sin, which is obviously God cannot sin. Okay, Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5 is another verse on that. Okay, but here are some examples of God repenting of doing evil. Okay, showing that evil and sin are not always synonymous. Exodus chapter 32 verse 14. Actually, I'll, I just want to make a correction. In this text, I'm going to read, God, God is not repenting of doing evil, but he's repenting of evil he was going to do to them. Okay, let me, let me just give a correction on that. Exodus chapter 32, verse 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Is God repenting of sin? No, because evil and sin are not always synonymous. And we're going to show that later in the scriptures. Uh, Jonah chapter 3, and verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he, that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay? Now, first of all, the Godhead knew good and evil before mankind did. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 22. Genesis 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now let us put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The God had knew good and evil. Okay, how is sin defined? Okay, sin is defined as a transgression of God's law. First John chapter three and verse four. First John chapter three verse four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Okay. Now, can God break his own law? Because I want to point something out. Evil is never defined as transgression of God's law. Okay, Because why? God can't break his own law. But yet we saw it earlier that God is repenting of doing evil. Okay, And here's proof that God can't break his own law. Psalms 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Okay, So evil is not defined as breaking God's law. Sin is defined as that, as a transgression of God's law. Okay, here's what I'm saying here. God created evil in the sense that the Godhead had knowledge of good and evil. That's one way you can look at it. The Godhead is the creator of all things, and all things consist by him, including evil. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, 
compare it with Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, and 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. Okay, so what it says in, in verse uh, Isaiah 45, verse 7, I create evil, it's not saying anything about God being the author of sin or God ordaining sinful actions. In fact, Scripture tells the opposite. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 31, Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 5, and Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 32, sorry, 32, verse 35, I do apologize, uh, it shows that when the children of Israel were sacrificing their children to Baal, God was saying, you know, it didn't even come to them. He says, you know, I commanded them not to do that. It didn't even come to my mind that you do that. Okay, that would, see, the child sacrifice they were doing in those verses was not part of God's will. God is not the author of sin. Calvinism is blasphemy. I, I, I have to come out and say it. It is blasphemy to make that claim. Okay, so anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.